in August of 1955, my father and grandmother and some aunts and uncles had a great adventure one night. In the summer of 1955, this historian was approaching his 15th birthday and accordingly has a good memory of what happened that summer. It was a typical time growing up in Hoptown in the 1950s, typically hot in August. And so it was on that night, as I recall it, of about August 21st, 1955, that all Helicaluk broke loose in Hopkinsville. It's a fantastic little story. It has lasted all these years. I heard it from the main source, and that was my father, who in the story is Lucky Sutton, or Elmer Sutton. Kelly in 1955 was uh, very little difference from today. It had a grocery store then and a restaurant service station a couple of churches, and a number of private residences. You see the little community of Kelly had grown up on the um, Chicago to Jacksonville line of the Louisville and Nashville Railroad, or as the hobos called it, the long and the nasty. My dad and his wife Vera had come in. They had worked with the carnival for years. And um, Billy Ray, which was my dad's friend at the time, and his wife June, they were all together. They decided to come in for the weekend. He wanted to come home, see his mom and, you know, his brothers and catch up and to see how things were going. And the night this occurred, they were all in the house um, and there was 11 of them in the house. As the sun's light began to fade, Billy Ray stepped outside to draw water from the well. He saw something shaped like a saucer streak through the sky, trailing a rainbow of colors behind it. It settled down in the woods behind the house. When Lucky Sutton came out to check on his friend's seemingly outrageous claim, the two men saw something emerge from the woods. Coming toward them was a glowing three-foot-tall silver being. Its arms were raised in the air over its head, and it was floating. Unnerved and frightened for their families, the two men ran indoors. At first, their family wouldn't believe them until Lucky's mother, Glenny, saw it at the back door of the house. Well, that was it. The fight was on. And so they started shooting, and they, they had a battle from the time it started till about 11, 11.30 that night until they finally got a clearing where they could run to Hopkinsville and get help. They had no phone, so that was the only thing they knew to do. The men claimed that the creatures were protected from the bullets by some sort of armor and would quickly return. By the time the night was over, you had police officers, you had reporters, you had People from Fort Campbell all out there traipsing around land trying to figure out, you know, what happened that night and they couldn't find anything. The only thing they could find was shotgun shells, of course, hoses, screens in the windows, woodwork shot off, and, but, no bodies. After the police left, the occupants of the Sutton home were to be terrorized again by three silvery beings until dawn and then a new invasion of Kelly took place. By 7.30 the next morning, everybody in this community knew that a spaceship from Mars had landed in the outskirts of downtown metropolitan Kelly. They were coming from everywhere. Magazines were coming out. Um, that night it happened, Kentucky New Era came out. They sent a reporter out then with cameras and everything. People were camping out in their yard waiting for them to come back. People were walking through their house and taking things as souvenirs, and it got really, really bad. But over the decades, public sentiment began to change, and the Christian County community began to take pride in the story. There's an exhibit at the Penny Ryle Museum, and in 2005, the Hopkinsville community celebrated the 50th anniversary of the Kelly Green Men. My grandmother was a church-going woman that read her Bible, that prayed, that made sure the kids went to church. And her credibility along with all this was enough 
many people believe. Chief at the time was Russell Greenwell, a highly respected individual. And his widow, Rachel, now deceased, told me this incident, that in the years of interviews that Chief Greenwell had on the subject of the Little Green Men, that Chief would say, I don't know. I don't know whether there's anything to it or not, but I know this. Every time I interviewed the grandmother, who was a witness, as the interview deepened, there would be a look of stark, horrendous fear come across her eyes that he said he could not explain. If in the mind of that old lady she saw something in the way of these little characters, then she saw it. Something did happen at night. And that, just don't think it can happen to one little family out in the country, it can happen to anybody. There is possibly things out here that we don't know, that we can't explain. Might be you.